coordinator of the chemistry lecture demonstration facility here. So what I do is I basically uh, try to uh, help people out as far as try to understand the concepts of chemistry, anything that's being covered any particular time during the, the uh, week, during uh, lectures, that's that sort of thing. Uh, what I want to do uh, for you really quickly right now, I've been told I may have five minutes to do this, is one of the demonstrations that we usually do, usually in first semester general chemistry, where we have, uh, where we're discussing uh, Lewis structures. Uh, so we have two compounds made. I have uh, one compound, it is silver cyanate, and the other one is silver fulminate. I've drawn the Lewis structures that are on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. Uh, the basic history behind this is that uh, we had, we had uh, a number of different uh, scientists in the, uh, in the 1800s that were uh, creating these, these compounds. Uh, one, is, one was uh, a num number of uh, Dutch and German scientists. Uh, some, uh, one, one person was, uh, was uh, creating different types of fulminates. And then in 1827, uh, there were two, two scientists, uh, von Liebig and, uh, and uh, Frederick Wohler, who developed two different compounds. One, one was uh, silver cyanate and one was silver fulminate. Uh, the prevailing uh, concept at the time was that uh, con compounds could only be different if they had different elemental compositions. It turned out that these two things had the same kind of composition. So what we usually like to do is we like to illustrate the differences between different types of compounds such as this. So what I have over here is two setups over here. One has silver cyanate and one has silver fulminate. So what I want to do is I want to, uh, oh, uh, the, the other thing also that I wanted to illustrate was the fact that uh, silver fulminate has a very, very uh, uh, limited amount of uh, usefulness over here. Uh, the main usefulness these days is for these things, which, which are probably illegal in the state of New Jersey, but anyway, uh, you can sell them. But uh, these are these are topics. These are uh, small fireworks. So oh, we, have those. we have those. Oh, so in that case, so you guys already know what this stuff does. When, when you do, what you do is just uh, throw this against a hard surface, and you hear a pop like so. So anyway, what I'd like to do is illustrate <laughs> different different types of things. So what I've done is I set the mood over here by lighting my candle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to light my rod over here. So now what I want to do is I want to demonstrate the two different compounds. So the first one is going to be the silver cyanate. So what I'm going to do is basically take a look at this thing. I'm going to try to heat this up like so. <laughs> and basically, all I'm doing is basically burning the paper, not really doing anything at all. And as you can see, wow. Wow. nothing happens. <laughs> However, if we have just a little change in the order of the atoms, we'll go on over here and we'll see what happens. And as I say to all my, my students over here, observe closely. see there is a difference between silver cyanate and silver fulminate. So that was the so so basically they saw different types of properties between the two. So then uh, it was not until 1830 when uh, Berzelius uh, coined the term isomerism. So this is an example of that. Okay? That's my demonstration for today.